And then of course the other way to kind of get it out is just beat on it from the front. I mean, I am hitting this with some force. It's just, it's not coming off. So what we are doing here now is we are removing these old spark plugs uh, which are uh, kind of charred and fouled and we are going to be replacing them with some new spark plugs that yeah that are not so maybe that'll help uh, help the car run longer um, so uh, these are the two um, different types. Uh, this one, as you can see, is clean. Um, and uh, hopefully it'll fire off a little bit better and uh, make the car run uh, a little bit better. It's in the AC Delco 41962. We'll report back when we have those all in. Uh, it's actually fairly not difficult to remove a spark plug, which uh, is a nice uh, change of pace. Uh, basically, all you do is you pull the little uh, spark plug boot thing off, and then your spark plug is uh, like wedged in there. And then you take your uh, deep wrench spark plug socket thing, flip that over to uh, loosen because we want to take it out. And you get that on, it's a little bit of a pain to reach, but you get it like on there. And you get it on there, and then you can just, yeah, just, just real easy, like, uh, uh, take it off. And uh, yeah, they're pretty, pretty easy to, to work with. I mean, like, considering all the other stuff on the car, it's not too bad. So yeah. Um, all right, now that you've loosened it up a little bit, we'll uh, try and uh, pull it out here. Is there? It hurt. Hmm. That one's not, that one's not all the way out. So, keep, keep working on that. And uh, yeah, eventually that'll pop out. Yeah, well, got number three out. Also very sooty. Um, and just, uh, yeah, tore the, tore the top layer of skin off, but that's okay. You don't need that. We'll put some kerosene on it, and make sure it's clean later. Uh, and we're gonna keep going on these puppies. All right, I got uh, the dreaded number four spark plug, and as you can see, it is, uh, it's pretty rough. Uh, I had these spark plugs changed when I drove the car back from uh, uh, Ohio in January of 2019, so these have been on here about four years and eh, 3,000 miles. Um, and they're not really, not really worth it. Uh, so hopefully these new ones will give it a little bit, uh, better engine performance. Um, boy, I tell you this, ow! Uh, this, uh, this number four is really tough to get in there, like, because it's at a, an angle that... No human being can get to, but just trying to get it in there without 
degloving me any further. <sighs> it's a work in progress. Better was left-handed to get that in there, no problem at all. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry, you are left-handed. So right now, Dad's working on getting the number seven, four plus three, uh, spark plug in there. Uh, you know, with the uh, oil stick, it's a it's a bit of a challenge, but we're working on it. Uh, I got my side done already, so kind of just waiting on him. <laughs> All right, uh, so we've uh, taken the drop off of. Uh, this side to kind of check the brakes they look like they're in pretty good condition uh, i sprayed them down with some brake cleaner uh the springs are still colored so uh that seems to be like they're new and then it's got new uh, bracket try there so i'm thinking that uh the brakes were redone so that lends credence to my theory that the problem is not so much with the brakes as it is with the brake lines giving pressure um, so for that I have something all right so to repair the damaged brake line um, I picked up some copper uh, brake line pipe um, it uh, came recommended on Amazon so I uh, trusted that jungle website and we'll see um, I already uh, tried to flare the end of it just to see if I could um, and that looks like a little kind of kind of trombone uh, which is fine basically what you do is you uh, find the fitting size on this which uh, in the case of this pipe it is uh, I think uh, 3 16th and then you clamp this down on top of it and then this thing uh, kind of turns to kind of turns to kind of sit right there it'll clamp in so you can then drive that into the metal um, and then spread it open it's uh, it's a little cumbersome to use but it's certainly not uh, something impossible so I'm hoping that because this, this is pretty malleable like you can bend it with your hand pretty easy so I'm hoping to work on that uh, and maybe try and get that in because I guess that's that's how you flare a fitting. Um, maybe. Uh, all right, we're over here at the driver's side rear drum, uh, and it's not quite cooperating. As should it be turning this much in park? But anyway, it's not quite cooperating, as well as the uh, uh, passenger side. Being, uh, um, but that's okay. Um, we've been using our uh, Tanya Harding to try and uh, knock it off, but it's it's shaking. But it's going to be a process. As you can see, uh, there's uh, been a little bit of debris that's come out of it. So I think uh, this car will probably get 20, 25 miles a gallon now with all the rate, weight reduction. Uh, so I'm going to keep banging on this as hard as I can with this guy and uh, see if we can get him to come off. Alright, as you can see, I'm under the car again, but that's okay. So right now I'm trying to just beat the ever-loving crap out of this brake drum from the rear try and get it off because it's kind of seized on there um, I'm hoping that you know that'll work because I've been putting some force on it the last five or six minutes just hitting it hard and it hasn't really budged yet but you know as you can see it's had uh, quite a bit of debris come out of it so I mean, maybe you can just watch me as I do it for a little bit and see if I can get it loose. I don't know. I'm putting some 
force to this. Like it, it'll spin pretty good. It just doesn't come off. side done of the spark plugs just waiting on yours <laughs> and then of course the other way to kind of get it out is just beat on it from the front I mean I'm hitting this with some force it's just not coming off <sighs> okay it was suggested of me to try and set this between 10 and 20 degrees timing um, I am having some trouble with that because the engine's not running long enough for me to try and do a timing belt with it um, so uh, this should be this is the number one here um, so I have tried to kind of just make that as close to a 10 to 20 degree angle as I could um, off of it just being straight on um, and we'll give that a shot see what happens Okay, what it seems to be doing is it's starting. So I'm thinking the distributor is working. Obviously, there's some spark coming through. The choke, I believe, is working because it's flapping the choke thing, the automatic choke. Uh, the spark plugs, I think, are working. Um, I don't think those would be wrong. Uh, I mean, they're brand new spark plugs, so I hope they work. They were supposed to be for my application. Uh, so it'll start and then run for a second or two, and then it kind of putters out. Is it getting too much fuel or not enough fuel? I put a rag in the exhaust and turned it on, and it, it blew it out. So I'm thinking the exhaust is working. So we, we should be getting exhaust. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know at this point. You guys have been really helpful, though, giving me suggestions, uh, so I really do appreciate that. Like, uh, one of y'all suggested the, uh, starter, the, the idle stop solo solenoid. Um, I did some research on this, and it's, uh, basically to make sure the engine stops when you turn the car off. Um, so I don't think that would have any effect on uh, getting it running and started uh, from what I was seeing. Maybe though. Um, beyond that, I've tried to plug up uh, any loose vacuum things I could find. I don't, I don't think this one matters because that's just for the uh, exhaust uh, from the valve gasket. Um, so, gosh, I really don't know because it should be like, like working now, but clearly we're, I mean, I can hear, I mean, it's, it's a bit smoky in there, but that's from the backfire. So why is that happening? I don't know. But... We're gonna keep pressing on and see what we can figure out. You know, I was uh, watching a video that um, 
Thunderhead 289 had done. Um, much, much more mechanically inclined than I am. But uh, he put a lawnmower carburetor on his 73 Maverick V8. He had to uh, 3D print some parts for it and make some sort of a circuit board to it. But he ended up getting 43 miles a gallon uh, with that. And if I can get this thing running and put like a, one of those on there and get 43 miles a gallon on an 84 Ford LTD, that'd be kind of cool. It's got a, what is it, a 19 gallon gas tank? So it'd be like 760 miles between Phillips. That might be kind of cool. Okay. Let's see if we can tackle this uh, gaping hole here. Uh, dang. My little plate didn't come with any bolts, so I have to try and find one. Let's see what we got. Hello. You will see me in the reflection of a cover that's very, very shiny. All right. Gonna try and get this guy into that hole. Came with the gasket, so let's see. I must uh, be doing something wrong because I don't remember Derek being under the car for as long as I have been. All right, well, I think that is a half inch, but this was designed in such a way that there's no room to get a wrench in there and put it on the thing to turn it so uh, uh, I might have to get uh, a uh, ratchet all right Ratchet time. Yes, sir, Bob. Uh. It's almost like this car just really doesn't want to run again. I don't know. It, why has it got to fight me all the time? I'm trying to help you. Well, now you're not even fitting on there. What? Please stop. Stop. Uh, let me get back to you. Uh. got it out of that thing uh, and uh, yeah I guess I will need to run to the store to pick up another one of these guys to put it on the other side of the plate great but but as you can see it's Kind of just an open hole now. Um, maybe that's maybe that really is causing an issue because that's I don't really know where that fuel pump goes, but it's got to go somewhere in there to make the little flapper go up and down for the mechanical pump. So plugging that off might give it more compression to run. 
I don't know. All right, as you can tell, the uh, sun has kind of uh, set on me, but that's okay. I'm gonna try and get a little bit more done if I can. Uh, I went to uh, uh, the auto parts stores in the area and uh, got some additional tools to hopefully kind of get this all together. I don't know if you can even see anything, so we're just gonna just gonna have fun here. Um, okay, so I mean, I got a uh, an air cleaner, just sort of the the basic kind that I could find. Uh, I think it was twenty dollars. So if that fits. That'll be a win. Uh, they didn't have any in like non-chrome, which, uh, you know, that's fine because uh, it'll get you home. Uh, I also picked up uh, some, uh, I don't know if you can see, but uh, some springs uh, for the uh, uh, throttle return. Uh, maybe that'll help. I don't know. I don't really know how to install those, but we'll give it a shot. Um, for now though, let's get under the car and see if we can't get that plate on. All right, we're, we are under the car. Um, I was not able to find the exact same kind of bolt, so I got these little nuts, uh, because the bolts I did find were a little bit, uh, bigger than the other ones in terms of, I guess they were longer, but they, the thread matched up and the diameter matched up. So I'm thinking if I put this in, even if it's too long to kind of slide into that uh, creepy looking hole up there, uh, maybe I can use the nuts to keep it the same length. Let me give that a shot. All right, so I bought the nuts and the bolts that were Supposedly the same size, but most of the nuts didn't go on one of the bolts, so I had to uh, keep trying different combinations until I got both of them with the nut on. So now I will try installing that in there. By the way, uh, it is a beautiful evening here in Texas right now. Um, so if you have the chance, go out and enjoy it. Got that plate installed. Um, it's, uh, it's chrome, so... My philosophy is if I just keep putting on enough chrome, this will get me home. Uh, but if that was a gap of some kind that allowed uh, compression to escape or something like that, uh, it's hopefully been sealed. I put the uh, uh, gasket on below it um, and put the uh, uh, nuts and bolts in. So um, we got we got gold and silver going on here. Okay. All right. New day, new us. Uh, Dad, as you can hear, is back there working on the uh, tire. Um, I'm going to try and install this uh, uh, air filter. Uh, we've also got, uh, I'm going to try and get the water uh, hose thing done. So I got some water hose, a heater hose, um, and a connector. 5 eighths to 3 quarter, um, and then several uh, fittings for uh, connecting gas lines. Uh, I, I found this, so um, it's a heater hose fitting, so I think that's going to work, I hope. I uh, got some more gas line. Uh, what else did I get? Got some Brecatry for the springs. So. We've got a we got a lot to do today. We're gonna try and get some of that done. So, goal today is gonna be to get the all that stuff put in and then the fuel line fixed. So, we'll see if we can do that. All right. So let's first start off with uh, trying to get this heater hose thing fixed. So, we got this guy who should slip into that guy Ugh. and then put that here which hopefully will go in there use the adapter to then oh these are the same size 
Okay, well, figure that part out. That's what clamps are for, right? What I think I'm going to start with is taking some thread lock, putting it around here to try and make sure that uh, the coolant doesn't come out. Just how do you use this? flimsy stuff. Doesn't help that it's in the wind. I don't know. Maybe that. That's pretty tight in there. All right, so then we just shoop. Okay. Now we need a connector. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, have bigger ones. Alright, here's a bigger one. Just, yeah. Unscrew that to the right size. Ooh. That's, that's, that's a tight fit. Uh, that's on there and uh, got the tape with it so hopefully that'll be a, a good seal uh, well kind of got the water hose on a little bit now trying to get this uh, fuel hose on I don't know if this is the right size connection or not but it's just like it's rubber so maybe it can give a little Give a little bit, give a little bit of your life to me. Uh, might need two hands on this. Try as I might, I can't get the hose to go more than like one thing in on this. So uh, 
and I have a fitting that looks like this, it's smaller that would fit in the hose, but the other end of it is too small to go into this. So I guess I need to take this off and uh, go to the store and see if I can find one that's got a smaller this end, but a same size that end. All right, add it to the list. All right, I think uh, we got the uh, air intake put on there. So it's starting to look like a full vehicle now. Um, we are a bit concerned with the height of it. Uh, but, you know, we'll burn that bridge when we get there. All right, so we got the air cleaner on here, which was... Uh, actually a pretty simple procedure uh again this was like 20 25 dollars was the cheapest one i could find also the lowest profile one that they had um and so basically you just set this on there and it comes with several different size uh screws and i chose the shortest one so it wouldn't hit the hood because we were a little concerned about hood clearance uh when we closed it we did feel like the hood was kind of giving us some resi resistance um, so we tried closing it slowly and looking and seeing what we could see and then like spraying some WD-40 to see if uh, this part would get wet it did not so I think overall what happened was just these springs have been kind of open because the hood hasn't been completely closed in uh, quite some time so I think they just got unused to being closed um, but the hood uh, does close and doesn't offer any uh, issues with that so we're good on there uh, we are going to go out to the store to uh, get some more uh, hose clamps and uh, get a new fuel thing if we can find it um, and then uh, 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 then I guess there's still the spring although I don't know if you really I don't know if you really need the springs on this kind of car because this thing has a spring here that really pushes forward on it um, but I guess and then we've also got this guy which is the transmission doohickey um, so got to figure out how to do that that'll be fun uh, and then hook it up and then it's just the fuel hose in the back and uh, maybe kind of start wrapping things up here. I don't know. Alrighty, so uh, we got uh, the new uh, heater hose line uh, plumbed in. Uh, got the tape on it. Uh, the uh, this thing, and it comes up over here, and then got another clamp, an adapter, clamp, and then back into the old hose. So. Theoretically, that won't leak. Now on to the fuel. All right, so in the day's dying light, we'll see if we can't, uh, can't get this hooked up. So I was successful with the previous uh, white tape. Oh. You know, it's, it's got to look good. That's, that's really the most important thing in a car, right? Nope, it's getting it running, Gary. Just, yeah. All right, so I've got the thread locker on there. jammed in there pretty well please please work yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's great too because this is all rusted so you really get to cut up your knuckles and see if that tetanus shot works for you yeah 
Yeah. 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 I mean. Come on now. Come on, Duncan, do something. I mean, it's gonna need more than that, Gary. Ow. Ow. Yeah. Maybe twist. Yeah. Twist and shout. Yeah. Come on. Ow. That is uh, really becoming a way to lose a lot of flesh. Well, this is supposed to be the easy part. Yeah, just kind of wiggle it, maybe. <sighs> I mean, that's just, I need more than that. That's just barely over the lip. <sighs> yeah, yeah. <sighs> no, I'm going to need like, Alright, this is... Five sixteenths. So and this is a three eighths fitting. So, so, so I guess the I'm hose is so just dumb. a little small, I'm but like... So uh, so you think it would have I'm just, so you know... Dumb. You can make dumb. it work, yes. right? I'm so dumb. Ow. I'm so dumb. Oh, yeah. That's... I'm so I want to stop I'm so dumb. doing that. I'm so dumb. Uh. I'm so dumb. Ow. But I guess I'll continue. I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. Ow. I'm so dumb. Yep. I want to continue I'm doing so that. Dumb. Ow. I'm so dumb. <sighs> I don't know if there's a way to soften up the hose or what I could do with this. I could have got a larger hose or a smaller nozzle and fixed all of these problems, but instead I decided not to. And what can one say about a person who that I'm not gonna have enough to clamp on it just yet. I'm so dumb. Maybe I don't need to clamp. Boy, it is. I'm so dumb. 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 I wonder. I'm so dumb. What if I pulled this off? I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. Who's so dumb? Would that make it easier? I'm so dumb. Is that gonna ruin the thread tape? I'm so dumb. Probably. I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. Hey everybody, I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. Who's so dumb? I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. Everybody, I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. I just like. Can I screw it in there? No, well, that wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so close to being done with this part. Help me understand. I mean, I'm making a little bit of progress, but 
it's not going well. I don't know if there's a way to like loosen up this hose or not, like put it in boiling water. Just press it as hard as you can. Just damage your hand fully. Let me get back to you on this. Got uh, this one on, snug. Ended up using a larger fuel hose, which uh, hopefully won't cause problems over here. Uh, on the cabareta, that's pretty snug on there. So uh, we'll see if that can hold fuel pressure. But getting getting close to being able to turn the uh, 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 fuel pump back on, which should be fun. All right, I uh, have the return line hoses here. I'm just going to try and mate them up as uh, cleanly as possible. So. Let me do that and I will get right back to you. Okay, uh, the end of the day now. Um, didn't quite get done with everything I wanted to do, but that's okay. Um, we kind of got this, this installed and uh, going to there. Um, and so hopefully that won't leak uh, gasoline all over the intake manifold. Um, then we have our uh, pressure, uh, fuel pressure, uh, our regulator. Um, we've got the incoming, the outgoing, and then the, to the carb. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get that pressurized correctly. Um, over here on the side of the car, still haven't been able to get this uh, uh, iron thing off uh, wheel that's okay though been uh, been banging on it and just a lot of rust has come out so I'm thinking there can't really be that much more there right and uh, get your tools on the other side here um, put this one back on the uh, brakes inside were looking good so um, uh, should be ready for the wheel once we're all done with the fuel portion however um, I ran out of a uh, fuel line so I'm going to have to just order some more on Amazon uh, because uh, they ran out in the local stores here so that's fine because uh, I would really much rather prefer not having like 10 connection points throughout so I think I'm just gonna get like 40 feet of line that should be enough to go to and from the back to the front of the car and uh, kind of get that worked on um, other than that uh, you know we're moving forward we got the uh, air filter on um, and the heater hose in so hopefully that'll work um, Got the uh, plate on for the uh, mechanical fuel pump, so that's not just a hole there. And I think we'll uh, we'll give it a shot, see if uh, maybe it starts. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us this week. Uh, Dad and I had a lot of fun uh, working on the car, uh, and uh, you know, a little bit of forward progress is all you can do for forward progress. No, okay. Anyway, so that's going to be it for this week, and uh, we'll see you next time. You guys have a good one.